I showed you how I started with this raw image, did my edits in Lightroom, and with a little bit of Photoshop, and ended up with this environmental portrait of this beautiful red fox. Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. Today, I wanted to show you how I edited this image, this environmental portrait of this beautiful red fox. Now, I did everything in Lightroom, but I did have to go to Photoshop for one thing, and I'll show you. I took this image back in January of this year when a group of friends and I did a winter photography trip, and we stopped at Jackson, Wyoming, Grand Tetons National Park for a couple of days. And while we were there, we of course photographed the Grand Tetons and we had a beautiful sunrise one of those two mornings. And one morning after photographing the mountains, we headed towards the frozen Jackson Lake, hoping to see some wildlife. And we actually saw this red fox kind of walking around. We followed him for about 15 minutes. We didn't want to stress him. And we were hoping he was going to get to an area that had kind of a better background, more a scenic background. And he moved around and he got close to the tree line and there were shade and light mixed in that area. And as the fox moved, we were able to take a few snapshots. So this one is a little bit better. This other one is one of my favorites, already edited. And this one another beautiful image of this beautiful animal. But as I was telling you today, I wanted to tell you about how I edited this image. Now, I even start with this. Here is the original image taken in draw format in the camera. Now, this image is well exposed. We can look at the histogram. I'm not touching the blacks not touching the white, so I think I have plenty of information in the histogram to recover some of the highlights on the snow. And this image was taken at ISO 400 F9. The camera focused precisely, the Canon R5, on the eye of the Red Fox, and I was at 324 millimeter. With the lens I had, I could have gone to 500, and perhaps that would have been better. But 324 millimeter and I have 45 megapixels to play with. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to crop it. I want to focus the attention a little bit more on the fox. So I'm going to come down doing like rule of thirds, hitting the letter L. I turn the lights off in Lightroom and that helps me better refine my crop, hitting the letter L again. I go back and done. That's the crop. That's already looking quite a bit better. I have enough room to the right of the fox and it still gives you the idea of the environment in which the fox is right now. I'm going to do some global edits first. And first thing I'm going to do is the exposure overall looking pretty good. So nothing there. I'm going to bring the highlights down because I want to recover some of the detail on the snow. I'm going to bring the shadows up because I want some of the trees to show up a little better, not too dark. I'm going to bring the whites down and I'm looking at the detail on the snow because I don't want it to be blown. Come back, I want that texture on the snow and I was able to recover it all. And I'm going to bring my blacks down a bit, and that gives me a little bit of contrast. So overall, this is looking pretty good. Now, one of the tricks I have told you before is when you have oranges and yellows in your image and you want them to pop, you can come down to the calibration panel and increase the saturation of the blue channel. So if I go all the way to the right, that's way too much. It also saturates the snow. I don't want that. So I'm just going to go up a bit. And that brings, you know, the color on the orange of the fox quite a bit. So let's go to the before. That's the before. This is now. 
before and now. Next thing is, now I want to focus our attention on the red fox. And to do that, we're going to go to the mask. And as you know, Lightroom added the artificial intelligence map. So select subject and select sky a few months back, and they continue to refine them. And I'm going to do select subject. And it works pretty fast. And it did a good selection, but it also selected in some areas that had nothing to do with the fox. So we're going to have to refine this mask. So I'm going to go back to the mask where it says subtract. I'm going to select the brush. I'm going to make sure the auto mask is turned on. And I'm just going to paint the areas that I don't want. Coming close to the fox. I don't want to get the circle in the fox right here between the ears. Around the face. This area under the body. This area here by the tail. Here between the legs. Turn the mask off. I'm going to do this area here. And, you know, you can spend your time refining the mask, but this one is looking pretty good. So now, what do we want to do to the fox itself? Well, I'm going to bring the exposure up. I want to bring a little more light into the fox, maybe about a third of the stop or so. I'm going to increase my highlights. Increase my whites a bit. I'm going to apply some texture to get that detail on the fur. I'm going to apply some clarity. Now, you don't want to go way overboard on the clarity because then it doesn't look very real. Something like that. If I turn off this mask, that's before the local adjustments we just made in the fox, and that's after. So maybe I'm going to add a little more contrast. And that's already looking very good. Finally, what I want to do with the fox is the face looks a little bit dark. So I'm going to paint a new mask. I'm going to create a new mask with a brush. Make a smaller brush. And I'm just going to select this area around the face that looks a little dark. And I'm just going to increase the exposure a bit. Again, you don't want to go too bright. Just a bit to balance. Maybe increase the contrast. Something like that. So that's without and that's with. Maybe I'm going to reduce it a little bit more. And we're done with the mask. Here is the before. The global adjustments and before the mask. And this is with the adjustments that we had made. Now, what is left to do? Well, now we have to deal with a few distractions. There are a few bright spots from the snow. They're you know, kind of catching your attention, like one here and one here. So I'm going to grab the King spot removal brush, make it really small, and remove, erase, some of those white spots, they're a little more obvious, and you can take your time. You can even visualize spots, click on this little box, and you can see some of those spots now show up, and you just take your, take your time going around and eliminating those spots one at a time. And like I say, it's just a little tedious, but the results are worth it. We're almost done. One more thing to do. And that has to do with eliminating this branch right here on the lower right and the branch on the left. They're just distractions. They don't add anything to this photograph. Now, I tried to do that with the spot removal brush in Lightroom, but it's just not powerful enough. We need something better. And the better technology is content aware fill that is available in Photoshop. As we know, to go to Photoshop from Lightroom, if I say have the image, I can just click and do edit in Adobe Photoshop 22, and this will automatically take the photo we had already edited and take me into Photoshop. 
Now, I had already edited the image and removed the branches. And so this is the PSD file that came back from Photoshop. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open this file to show you what I did. To open this file that is already a PSD file, I right click on it. I'm going to do edit in Photoshop 2022. It gives me the options. I'm going to select edit original because I want to go back to that specific PSD and we'll go to Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop and I had three different layers. I'm going to turn off the first two and the background layer is the image that I had originally brought to Photoshop from Lightroom with the edits that we had done in Lightroom. I then remove, eliminated the branch on the left. And then I repeated the same process to eliminate the branch on the right. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm going to turn off those two. I'm going to go back and select the background layer. And let's work first the branch on the left. What I'm going to do is select the lasso tool and just do a loose selection around this branch. You don't have to be very precise. And there we are. Now, I'm going to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. And Photoshop analyzes the image and the artificial intelligence system analyzes the image and thinks that the area selected in green are the best candidates to find inspiration to create new pixels. And he got it almost right but not quite, you know, I still selected a little bit of the fox. So I'm going to delete some of the areas that I don't want Photoshop to think are candidates for trying to replicate some of the textures. And on the preview on the right, you get a preview of the results and it's already looking quite a bit better. You can see that it blended the small bottom branch really well and it blended the bigger branch to the rest of the pine tree really well. And all I have to do now is save it. The trick here is to go to output settings and you have a few options. You can go to the current layer and save it, but I don't want to replace that background layer with new pixels. You can create a new layer or you can duplicate the layer that you came from. So I'm gonna do new layer. And when I said, okay, it created a new layer. And you can see that new layer has the fix that we just did. And it actually did a pretty good job. Now I'm gonna remove the marching ants, control D, and looks pretty good. If you see any repeating patterns, like I have these two branches right here, what you can do is make sure you have that new layer that we created selected take the spot healing brush and just paint over the area that you want to fix and eliminate some of that uh, repeating pattern that you have. And now it's looking much better. You can make it look very natural. You can get it to blend better. And basically we're done with fixing the left hand side of the image. And that's the same process that I use for then fixing this lower right branch. And to do that, again, let's repeat it. Select your background layer. Select the lasso tool. Do a loose selection. Go to Edit, Content Aware Fill. Trim, eliminate the areas that you don't want Photoshop to use for inspiration. And while you do that, pay attention to the area that is fixing. In this way, you can try to see where you have a natural result. And this one is already looking better. And it's recalculating every time. And here it looked like it did a pretty nice job. So I had to do select OK, make sure I'm created a new layer. I click OK, Control D to eliminate the marching ants. And there you have it. We have created the fix that we wanted. And if you want to do a better job of blending some of the edges, you can use the spot healing brush 
or you can use the close tab tool. Now to go back to Lightroom, control S to save the file and then we're going to be back in Lightroom with the edits that we did. Here we are in Lightroom, you know, the image that we had originally edited, we went to Photoshop to illuminate those two big distractions that we have because Lightroom didn't give us a powerful enough tool and Photoshop Content Aware Fill was the magic that we needed. Anyway, amigos, I hope you like this raw edit, my workflow for an image like this. I leave you here with this other video I did recently on another raw edit for a very dark image. I hope you find these videos on how to use Lightroom, Lightroom sometimes with Photoshop and plugins useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, tell your friends about the channel, help me grow the channel, send your comments, and I'll see you next time.